Cheers everyone, Warmik here. Today marks a special day on the channel because we're finally covering the final of the major races that exist on EO, the Dark Elves. Of course, not the last race that exists, period, there's some other smaller ones which will get their own videos eventually. But before we start, if you enjoy the content, make sure to like and subscribe, otherwise you'll be turned into a spider brute, or a spider dude, depending on which one you like more. But without any further ado, roll the intro. The Dark Elves as a race were the last of the three major dark races created by Zarah. This is not counting in the Fiel Dark. That being said, they are also special in a way because Zarah didn't create them for himself but instead for his guardian brother or I guess renegade brother Noor as thanks for joining him when he left the guardians. Zarah took elves and changed them into cold, collected and ruthless being which would honor his brother Noor as their main deity. This all happened around the same time as the other dark races, between 1000 and 750 BC, but most likely around 850 BC. Unlike the orcs and the trolls, however, the dark elves were much less straight up aggressive, but instead more calculated and strategic, which doesn't mean that they were worse as fighters. In fact, out of the dark races, the dark elves, or as they are also called, the Norcane, are most likely the strongest due to their strategic approach to war and battle. Before the War of the Six Races had started, the Dark Elves also went to Urgath with the Orcs and the Trolls to explore it, during which they found the Skags, a timid but hardworking race which the Dark Elves decided to enslave for themselves to avoid having to do any real hard work. After that, they participated in the War of the Six Races and lost with the rest of the Dark Side. They fell back to the eastern part of Fiora and created a new kingdom there they call La, which means that the Dark Elves have two main kingdoms on Eo, La in Fiora with the capital Shal, which is the bigger one, and Shaldun on Urgath, which was created when they first went to Urgath before the war. Now, once La was founded at the end of the war, around 600 BC, something important happened. The Dark Elven society took on a caste system which split into three parts. The Drakon, which are the warriors, the Archon, which are the mages, and the Sinistra, which are a mix of both that didn't really fit in with either of the previous two. Now to stress this, this system was used by all the Dark Elves since then. There were no periods where it was different, always just those three, alright? The caste system itself is pretty interesting. We know that it has ranks, but not exactly how they work. For example, a Dark Elven male, if he wanted to be a warrior, would belong to the Dracon caste, but not all of them are equal, meaning that you have more important Dracons and those that are kinda like soldiers within the caste itself. Despite all of that, it's actually the Archon caste that rules over the Dark Elves and disputes among the castes are fairly common. Unlike with a lot of the other races, we know how women fit into all of this. The Dark Elven women have a much stronger bond to black magic than the men, which makes them powerful and very dangerous to the point where the men decided to keep them indoors and forbade them to study black magic at first. This later changed, but for the longest part of their history, the women were there to bear children and to take care of them, nothing more. The next centuries were rather uneventful for the Dark Elves as a whole. Sure, there were some disputes among them, but nothing worth speaking about on a global scale. This is until the Convocation. Once the cataclysmic event had ended, a fiery mountain arose in Shaldun and Urgath. Some of the Dark Elves there took that as a sign of Sarach and started to worship him instead of Nor. They called themselves the Crimson Empire and started practicing more fire magic instead of black magic, alongside, you know, doing all of the things that Orcs would typically do to honor Zarach. This started a civil war in Shaldun, which was eventually won by the Nor worshipping Dark Elves. However, it didn't take too long for the people to fall into disarray once again. Nashar, a crazed Archon, managed to fully release the shadows into Eo, and later his wife Serena managed to make them submissive to her, all to revive her now dead husband. This obviously didn't sit well with a lot of the Dark Elves in law this time around, and another civil war broke out. Normal Dark Elves versus Serena and her shadow tainted followers in 19 AC. Initially, Sovina won this war but was later defeated by the Shai Khan known as the Soul Bearer. However, the pact between the Dark Elves and the Shadows had been made so their people continued to live on together with them in a kind of symbiotic relationship. As far as the general history of the Dark Elves goes, this is it. Now let's take a look at where they actually live on Eo. We have the biggest two first, La, with the capital Shal, and here on Urgath, Shal Dun. Outside of that, they used to inhabit the Ghost Watch in the past, as well as a few fortresses in the Darkwind Mountains. At one point, they were also in Tirganar, but were shooed out by the Dark Elves when they arrived. If it wasn't obvious by now, the Dark Elves are really heavy when it comes to religion, and it's a huge part of their everyday life. The Dracon, maybe not so much, but the Archon, and especially the Sinistra, are. So pretty much every of their action is to honor Nor and to prepare Eo for his eventual return. 
And that would be that. If you have any more questions, because I know these videos just cover the general stuff, ask them in the comments or join the official Discord which is linked in the description below and I'll answer them as best as I can. In case you enjoy the content, leave a like on it, share and subscribe, it does help out a lot. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.